you know, for those of you who helped us move all the tables earlier, there's something y'all don't know. That's actually not the first time we've moved locations for this. We were gonna do it at the elementary school, but unfortunately I partnered myself with Andrew Zach, so we couldn't do that. So please welcome to the stage, your homecoming king, Andrew. How you guys doing? Uh, it's great. Better now? That's a pretty good song. It's a good callback. Um, so, it seems after today, my, the mythology surrounding me is only growing. Um, and a lot of people still don't really know too much about me, so I figured what I'd do today is tell a few personal stories. Um, one starts off with, well, like, how did I become what I am today? And I guess, I blame it mostly on my family, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, my mom's here, she's laughing because she knows it's true. Um, so, about a little over a year ago, last August, um, my uncle came over to my house to deliver a birthday present for my brother's 15th birthday. Now, I hadn't seen this uncle in about two and a half months, and I was standing in the kitchen, and he just walks in, and apropos to nothing, skips the pleasantries, he looks me straight in the eyes, and he says, Andrew, you know the fastest way to take down an assailant? <laughs> and there's not too many right answers to that question. In fact, there's one. And I was about to learn it. Um, and so, uh, luckily for me though, any question is a rhetorical question if you just stare at them long enough. So I did. And he says, I know what you're thinking and it's not that. He said, come at me with this knife. And he pulls the knife off his belt. And he, 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 he gives to me blade first, so I take it from him. And he's like, yeah, he's like, no, come at me with it. And so I lunge at my uncle with a knife in my kitchen on my brother's birthday. And the first thing he does, he takes both fingers and he pokes me straight in the eyes. And I go down like I stepped in a hole. Like just, like just straight down. And so he's looking at me and my vision is blurring. You know, the tears are forming in there, like completely accidentally. And he's looking at me, he's like, you can't stab me now. He's right. I could not. Like, I learned that one at work. Now, he sells loans to chicken farmers. So it's, it's a dangerous business, I will say. And so that is the quick story of how my brother got a knife for his 15th birthday. Yeah. Um, so this next one, I'm a little bit worried about. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, I'm sure many of you have been to YMCA camps. Right? They have something of a, also a mythology here, Alan, that you have. Uh, and there's kind of a ladder to YMCA camps. They don't really tell you that, but um, before my eighth grade year, which would have been my first, my first year at, uh, at Westminster, I went to a YMCA camp, and it was definitely towards the bottom of that ladder, but you wouldn't know it from the website. Um, and so I went, and it was, well, I'm not gonna tell you what it's called, that'd be bad. Uh, <laughs> And I went, and, um, and I mean, just to give you an extremely brief explanation of this camp, in my cabin, there were three people named Mike. One of them, I know, it was a big cabin. Um, one of them was 20, and had brought a second bag full of fireworks to sell. And he did. Uh, the other one was 15, and had been in college for two years. And, and the third Mike had like, road spikes in his ears. They were, they were so, and I just, I knew we wouldn't see eye to eye. And the I walk up to him, because I figure that's what you do on the first day. And, the, and he must have felt the same way, because the first thing he said to me is, yeah, you know, before you say anything, let's just, can we just agree to disagree? And this is, I, thought, I thought I was very diplomatic of him, but that's not the story I'm telling. Um, one night, uh, pretty late, my counselor took us to the river after it had rained. And so the, the water level was very high, so we could swim in the river. Um, and so we swam until pretty late that night. And the next day, I find myself talking to one of the youth ministers at the camp. Um, and we're having a, a fine conversation. And my, I see my counselor coming up out of the corner of my eye. And most of these counselors were Brazilian Portuguese, um, which it's a long way to come. And so he, he spoke ex, ex, extremely little English. And so, uh, and he wants to warn me about the, oh, I didn't even get to that part. Uh -huh. A couple kids the next day got E. coli from the river. <laughs> I feel like that's a detail I need to share with you. Uh, so he wants to warn me about this E. coli. 
And so he, he, he walks up in this conversation I'm having with the youth minister, and um, he wants to be very sensitive about it, but not knowing very much English. The way he goes about it is, Andrew, about last night, you might want to get yourself tested. <laughs> and, and the look on the youth minister's face was like we were worshiping the golden calf all over the it was, and so I walk away, and I just hear the, the first few words, it must have been a very colorful conversation, but I got myself tested, I didn't have E. coli, and that was, that was fantastic. So that's the story of how I didn't get E. coli. Uh, and this is called one-liners for Alzheimer's. I don't have too many one-liners. Um, let's see. I bought a Hitman with Delta Sky Miles. I like that one. You can pretty much put anything in that Hitman blank and just Delta Sky Miles, that's beautiful. Um, so, a little bit more about me. Probably haven't learned too much. Uh, I have had a total of three therapists. It's pretty awesome. That's a joke in and of itself, but you know, or you can snap. Um, my second therapist told me we should see other people. Yeah, yeah. So by the time I got to the third, I was, I was feeling pretty good. You know, you get used to therapy. You know? So I walk in. And I mean, pretty much, if you wear glasses, have a mahogany desk, and tape a diploma to your wall, you might as well be my best friend. You have opened me up like a Ziploc bag. Right? I am just pouring it out on you. And so, I don't even let this guy get a word in, and I'm telling him how I can't, like, trust my father or something. I have no idea. And he's telling me, and he stops me, like, at one point, he's like, Andrew, it's been 20 minutes. I just want you to know you were scheduled for 4.30 and not, and not 4. But I, just, I didn't want to stop you here. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not the... That's not how you go about it. So I guess if there's anything I'm going to leave you with, it's uh, don't stop until your therapist tells you you have to. Thank you much.